So it goes back to the original machine that the first machine that mankind ever built was the lever. Uh, you take the uh, work end, you take the power end, and at this point we have a four to one ratio. So a hundred pounds to be lifted here, it takes 25 pounds to push it here. The main thing to remember is with the lever is if we make a circle around here and another circle around here and then slide those apart, we basically have gears. And well, we do have gears. And it's all about ratios in your transmission, in these old cars, in these old trucks. Uh, the less horsepower you have, the more leverage you need to get the job done. This is a 1936 international truck. It's pretty conventional. This is pretty much what's going on in most of today's trucks. You've got a drive line spinning, spinning a pinion gear. The ring gear is it's rotating, it's turning against that, which sends the power out to the wheels, directly out to the wheels. The uh, ratios in this thing are probably four to one, so you get that four to one leverage thing going again. Um, and that's pretty much, like I said, pretty much the way they're, they're looking today. This, this is relatively contemporary, even though it's 1936. So uh, that's kind of like what's in everybody else's trucks. Except that tapered drive lines are really cool. 1911 Packard solved this problem by still running a one-to-one -one gear ratio through the drive line, spreading it out, reducing it somewhat, but then the chain drive, which you see on a lot of these old trucks, actually the size difference uh, gives you even more leverage yet. One of the advantages to this old system is because they hadn't to come up with really good bearing axle combinations that a guy could run, the axle was still back here just riding on bearings like a cart or a uh, or the or like the front axle. And then the chain drive allowed you to separate the power from the axle. The, the metallurgy just wasn't really that high in 1911 that they could get away with the modern style uh, axle. One of the advantages of the chain reduction at the last moment is you get an extra set of brakes on this wheel, which also has the advantage of the leverage supplied by the difference in gear sizes. The uh, brakes in this thing are completely mechanical. Uh, one set is driven from this lever, uh, one set is from the pedal, uh, which turns out to be handy because the last time I tried to stop this thing, you put your foot on that pedal, push as hard as you can, you pull back on this lever as hard as you can, and uh, from the speed of four guys pushing, uh, it actually is an effort to stop it. Uh, but you've got one set of brakes inside the rear opening in the rear drum, and you've got one set of brakes on the outside clamping down the lever clamps the pedal spreads, and it can use both. 1914 Republic, it's, it's not done, but before it got put together, I wanted to really show and look at the way they, they got the necessary gear reduction to be able to use this thing as a truck. It's uh, still one-to-one -one out for its top gear, one-to-one, one-to-one at the differential. Their huge reduction, instead of a chain, they ran a gear, a spur gear, and then the outside gear on the drum, which drove the tires. The axle is still an old school trailer style axle. It's just floating by itself uh, and the, the hub itself. The brake drum is driving the tire. It's, it's kind of a unique truck. One strange side effect of the old chain drives is because the differential action's up here and you still get a further gear reduction between this gear and the wheel they could run this really, really low. That giant ring gear wasn't necessary. And the uh, dome is actually, if you look at it, it's sitting very, its deck height is very, very low, which was handy because back in this day, they didn't have forklifts. Everything had to be loaded or unloaded by hand. 